Hi, this is Matthew Robert Payne, and this is uh, the parable of the miners. Um, this should be a sobering parable for you. Um, if uh, you're new to my channel, this is the first video you've seen. I'm teaching on the parables of Jesus, and there's going to be 54 parables on a playlist on my YouTube channel uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, this is uh, parable number 40, so there's 39 other parables there. My name is Matthew Robert Payne. I've written and self-published 57 books on Amazon, quite a, an achievement. I've written 850 uh, articles on Ezine articles, E-Z-I-N-E articles.com. And uh, I've produced two and a half thousand videos. I would consider myself a teacher of the word of God, uh, also called to be a prophet. Um, I encourage you to watch all these videos on YouTube or um, wait for a few months and um, buy the book. Uh, we're just going to go to the text and I'm going to go through the text um, on a share screen. And um, I hope that um, you are convicted by this passage. Now, as they heard these things, he spoke another parable because he was near Jerusalem because they thought the kingdom of God would appear immediately. Therefore, he said, a certain noble man went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and return. So he called 10 of his servants, delivered to them 10 miners and said to them, do business to, to I come. And, but... But the citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, We will not have this man reign over us. And so it was when he returned, having received the kingdom, he then commanded those servants to whom he'd given the money to be called to him, that they might know how much every man had gained by trading. Then come the first master, your miner has earned ten miners. And he said to them, um, um, and he said to them, um, mine, your miner has earned 10 miners. And he said to him, well done, good and faithful servant, because you're faithful in very little, have authority over 10 cities. And the second came, said, master, your miner has earned five miners. Likewise, he said to him, You've, you're also over five cities. Then another came saying, Master, here is your miner, which I have kept away in the handkerchief, for I feared you because you are an austere man. You collect what you did not deposit and reap what you did not sow. And he said to them, Out of your own mouth I will judge you, you, you wicked servant. You knew that I was an austere man, collecting what I did not deposit and reaping what I did not sow. Why then did you not put my money in the bank? that at my coming I might have collected it with interest. And he said to those who stood by, take the miner from him and give it to the one who has ten miners. But they said, Master, he has ten miners. For I say to you that everyone who has will, will be given, and from him who does not have, then what he has will be taken away from him. Bring here those enemies of mine who did not want me to reign over them and slay them before me. Okay, those enemies who did not want me to reign over them is the modern church. The modern church calls Jesus saviour but refuses Jesus to be Lord. And uh, the modern church, by and large, has rejected Jesus and has erected a Jesus in their own name and in their own image. Of course, Jesus is merciful and full of grace, and someone uh, who worships him, um, he'll send down his presence and they'll feel the anointing. Uh, someone who uh, gets the power of the Holy Spirit can move in miracles, but just because you move in miracles does not mean you're going to be saved in the end. Okay, so here we go. One of the guys got one miner and made ten miners. You'll notice that uh, when the master came back, he gave that 
uh, guy authority over 10 cities. He'd made one miner in the 10 and he got a reward, which was tenfold. He got to reign over five cities. Now compare that to the guy who got one miner, the same. We all get one lifetime. Everyone on earth gets one lifetime. They don't get two. So let's just say the miner is our life. We get a life. And then what we do with our life will will uh, work out what sort of reward we get. So the guy who got one miner turned it into 10 miners and he got to rule and reign over 10 cities. The one that got one miner, one life, and produced five miners, he got to rule and reign over five cities. So Jesus is just with his reward and he's saying in this parable, that he'll reward people according to their works. Um, people don't like this uh, teaching, that this understanding that Jesus is going to judge people according to their works and reward people according to their works. People um, have uh, trouble understanding that there's different realms in heaven. Uh, you, you think you're going to heaven. You think you're going to walk up to King David and Moses and say hello and have a chat you'll be surprised that you won't even see them sometimes because they live in different realms and they're in different realms of glory. And everyone in heaven is apportioned to a state of, uh, state of heaven uh, according to their works. And uh, so it is, uh, Jesus is talking about his kingdom here, his eternal kingdom, and he's talking about reward. And so there's going to be some people who have uh, great authority in heaven and great authority in the future earth. Uh, but uh, that'll be proportionate to, and you can be sure Jesus is a good judge, that'll be proportionate to what they did with their life. Now, I, I'm saying the minor isn't money because different people have different amounts of money and different resources in the earth that varies in, in everything. Some people are blessed to come from a, a good family with plenty of money. Some people come from poor families. If, if God was going to reward people according to the money and the finance they make for the kingdom, that would be unfair. But if, if a minor can be related to one person's lifetime, well, a poor person can bless a lot of poor person, people uh, because he knows poor people and uh, rich people can bless all sorts of people because he's got finances and the ability to bless other people. But if we all get one minor, which is one life, then God can um, judge us according to what we did with that life. Now, the person with one minor didn't do anything. He put it in a handkerchief and remember that... Um, the minor in that case was a piece of money, so he could put it in the handkerchief. But if you say a minor is a life, that would be tantamount to putting your light under a basket that the, the parable of, of the Christian light uh, exposed. Uh, putting your light or putting your life under a basket, hiding your life in a handkerchief, is uh, something that God... <laughs> through Jesus, because Jesus was teaching the word of God, God's just simply not impressed. And you, you'll be fortunate if you even go to heaven doing that. Now, I have to confess that I know this to be the truth. And I'm preaching forth truth in these parables and I'm spending time trying to preach the truth that I know. I know that over 80% of the church aren't producing fruit and they've hidden their minor in a handkerchief. And I can tell you what, you're in a dangerous place, and that's got to stop, and that's got to change. And you may have heard this parable 10 times, 20 times, 50 times. You may have heard this parable preached a few times. You may be an expert on the parables, listening to preachers and reading books on the parables. You may have heard all sorts of things. Well, I'm telling you, clear as day, I'm here sitting at my computer preaching this and taking my time and making an effort to make a book that'll be 99 cents and I won't even be earning money. And uh, in six months' time, you'll be able to go to my website and get the book for free. 
this isn't about money. This isn't about me getting a big reputation. This is me investing my minor in training people to work righteousness. I can tell you, I can warn you, if you're part of the religious whore church and you're not shining your light and you're not doing good and you're not reproducing in the kingdom and producing fruit, you're in big trouble. Now, you may ask, uh, when Jesus gave the guy with uh, gave the guy's minor uh, to another person who had ten minors, and it says uh, everyone who has will be given, and him who does not have even what he has will be taken away from him. What does that mean? He who does not have even what he has will be taken away. If he doesn't have anything, how can what he has be taken away? Well, this guy had a life. He had a minor right and he was meant to invest his life in producing fruit he was meant to invest his life and reproduce things for the kingdom but he's going to have his life taken away from him and anything that he has any resources that he has is going to be given to the guy with the 10 miners do you know if you have riches in this world and everyone in the West, even people on the disability pension or government pension has riches, a lot richer than, than people in the East on $2 a day. Do you know if you, you've got an income in the West and you've got your iPad and iPhone and you've got your um, big screen TV and you've got your brand name clothes, do you know if you're not doing anything for the kingdom, you're in serious trouble? And uh, Jesus talks about the lukewarm in the church of Laodicea in Revelation. And you're in risk in, in the coming years to being vomited out of Jesus' mouth. So even what you have, it, you're going to have lost. You're going to lose what you have. And so... This is time to honestly repent. Now, I can tell you uh, my books, uh, um, 13, uh, 13 Ways to Becoming the Light of Christ, uh, Influencing Your World for Christ, and Do We Really... Um, do, I forget the name of my other book. Um, I'll put it there uh, in the text in the book. If you read those three books... It'll teach you how to shine your light and produce fruit and uh, live a life worthy of bringing other people into the kingdom, how to reproduce your minor. I encourage you to read those books, Do We Live Like Him? Something that's got a cross on it. Um, so uh, I encourage you to read those three books and apply those three books and save your own life before Jesus takes what you have and takes it away. If uh, you're encouraged by this message, press thumbs up. Uh, if you didn't like this message, press thumbs down. Uh, if uh, you want to encourage me with a comment, please comment. Uh, if you want to subscribe to my channel, I encourage you to do so. God bless.